Welcome back, my favorite peeps. You ready for another van build video? Because this week, we're putting all our aluminum framing in and building all our walls around of our battery trays, our washroom, and where our heater is going to go. And I'm hoping this doesn't upset anybody because, yes, I am aware when we installed all this underneath our van and ran our coolant lines up through the floor, we had said there's no way I could do this all in one video. So if you're interested in seeing the complete heater install, make sure you hit that subscribe as well as that notification bell. And I promise you, we are gonna get to the point where we install the heater into this section here. But in order to get all these parts you see here installed into Romer, we need to get our framing system built here so we have something to mount all that stuff to. So that means we're playing with our erector set again. Now to start this video off, I promise I'm not here to waste your guys' time. Yes, we've already done a video on this and I'll tag it right here for you in which we talked about the basic mounting instructions, how the product works, so on and so forth. And you guys can always flip back to that one there if you wanna see those details. Today, I'm gonna to discuss some of the challenges and some of the things I've learned along the way while working with this product. And I'm just gonna speed lap the actual building process of us putting the frames around our shower, our battery tray, and where our heater and fridge are gonna end up being inside our van. So what I wanna do is I wanna start off with the positives of 8020 over top of a two by two piece of wood. Now I did mention in the last video, they're the exact same size as each other, inch and a half by inch and a half. But when you get this stuff in a bundle, you know when you open that bundle up, it's gonna come out looking exactly like what you bought all by dimension from front to back. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. When you buy a bundle of two by two pieces of wood, first off, when you open them up, you find out it's got huge knots, which means a whole section of it is completely unusable. As well, is if it sits around on your floor at all, you'll notice your 80-20 is always completely straight, but your two by two piece of wood bends and twists and forms and turns into freaking hockey sticks most of the time, which makes it a serious pain in the butt, as well as a lot of that wood you buy just won't be usable. And the next piece is these slider nuts. Now, as mentioned in our previous video, they slide into the end of your 8020 like this, and then you just take your L bracket and you bolt them together. Pretty simple. And once you have both sides on like this, you have a nice, solid, secure setup. But if the time came and you all of a sudden wanted to put a spot in between like that for maybe a cross brace or whatever else, if you didn't think ahead and put one of these economy T nuts in, it won't. There's no way of mounting it in. So you have to replace it with one of these roll-in T-nuts, which can be placed in anywhere you want at any time and just slide right in the T-groove like that, which makes it so it's not such a big deal. But this piece right here is like 36 cents, where this piece right here is over two bucks. So planning ahead with this and having these in the right spots ahead of time can save you a lot of money. For reference, in between these two uprights, you'll see we put four extra T sliders inside this spot here so we can have a couple extra uprights in here. Of course, we wanna make sure we don't have too many of them though because as you'll see, they'll rattle like crazy. If you have a spare one sitting inside your T slot that's not bolted down, and we don't want that in between our walls. But on the flip side, you'll see where I've put this in place and pre-planned a couple extra in the upright here is I only put three extras in when I actually should have had five extras in. And that means I have to A, put in these $2 slide in T-nuts or B, pull this back apart, slide a few T-nuts into the top side and then put it back together. And that's what I chose to do because we did catch it early enough to be able to make that change and put those sliders in instead of using the $2 nuts, which with the number of sliders we've used, if we start using T-nuts, the, the roll in T-nuts everywhere, our budget would fricking triple like right now. And to speak of that, the actual economy T-nuts, I'm down to five, which means there's no way I'm gonna finish this, which also means no video this Sunday. So the next piece we want to talk about is the corner brackets themselves. So these are just 90 degree angles, one bolt hole per each. 
that go into the corners of your framing, like this that we're showing you here. Now the thing with these, is you don't actually realize how many of these things you're gonna use, and they're like four bucks a pop. So I'm getting to the point where this is gonna kill our budget. So what I've done here, is I've bought some angular aluminum, which is inch and a half by inch and a half, exact same size as what we have with these brackets. Then I'm just gonna measure them out as per these brackets, cut them into individual pieces, and drill holes in each one of them. Which then you end up with a whole pile of brackets, self-made, that looks like this. So out of that whole four foot chunk that we had, I was able to make just shy of 40 pieces, I think 37. So they're just over a dollar a piece now, instead of $4 a piece like these ones. So one thing I don't wanna do is I don't want to devalue the 80-20 product, because if you look at the thickness of this, you look at the thickness of the ones we just made, there's a significant difference, which means I'm gonna use these in non-load zones, and I am still gonna use the 80-20 ones in the high load zones, just because I feel they're gonna be quite a bit stronger than the brackets we just made. But with that being said, if you're doing your own build with 80-20, and you use this idea, I'm pretty sure I just saved you about a thousand bucks. You're welcome. And see, with our slider nut in there, now attaching these to an upright that this always wants to fall down, that's another challenge. We'll discuss that in another 80-20 video coming up because we got a lot more to build. But using our custom brackets we made, just gonna take our bolt, line it up with our hole, and assemble it just like we did all the rest of them. And we're ready to rock, my friends. Tighten her down. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So that's not something I thought, oh no. So remember when I said these ones here were quite a bit thicker than these ones here? These bolts that it comes with are now too long. Uh-oh. Frick. Another week goes by, we don't have a video, my friends. Okay. <laughs> so, after a bunch of running around, I found what we need to do, instead of using these bolts that came with it, I could not find any more flathead with Allen keys that were shorter than three quarters of an inch. So I had to buy a hex head that is half inch compared to the three quarter inch that comes with it. You'll see here. Oh, Nelly. So we'll take this off, make sure we don't lose our fitting again. Then we'll put our shorter bolt through and now those brackets we made Work perfectly, my friends. Next is the situation where you have two bars coming up and you want to put one in between, yet your angle bracket is not going to fit to be able to mount down into it. So to be able to handle this, you'll see in the end of the 8020 here itself, it has that hole. Well, it's fit perfectly for a 5 16 18 threads per inch tap that we can just put inside our vise and tap it out. So now we can take a longer 516-18 bolt and actually thread right into the end of our piece. Now, to get that to mount to here, we gotta put this in the drill press. So we're gonna use our step bit just to drill out the edges of that T-frame so that we can fit the head of the bolt down through into there and then use our drill bit and then that way the bolt can go straight down through our aluminum. We're gonna take the piece that we tapped out in the center of it. We're gonna drive our, hole, our bolt up through the hole here. And then it threads on, and bada bing, bada boom. We have a middle piece in there without any brackets needed, and it's on there solid. And then using that same technique, you'll see for some of the walls, I wanna put wood in between the framing so we got spots to mount our walls to, especially inside the shower area. And to do this, we're gonna take our piece of aluminum that's cut to size. We're gonna mark out where we want the holes to be. Use our step bit again, drill out the flange so the head of our bolts can fit through. And then use a drill bit to drill the holes all the way through. And then just using some simple wood screws like these, we just screw them all together and our aluminum is now attached to our wood. Now for this part right here where we drill that flange out, I like using the step bit because it's nice and slow when you bring it down, as well as it kind of pre-marks the hole where your actual drill bit's gonna go through, which just makes the whole assembly and whole drilling process a lot quicker and more efficient. 
And I should also probably mention that if you don't have a drill press like this right here, this job is still totally doable. Just using the step bit and the hand drill, you can still pre-drill those holes. It's not quite as clean, but it does work. And then just use your small drill bit and drill it through. And now you can still screw it all together without a drill press. Now I know. Some of this stuff might think, now I know some of this stuff might seem like it's more a hassle than it's worth. No. Hello? Hi. I keep trying to record and my phone keeps dinging and ringing and all that kind of banging stuff. So between me freaking messing up my words and then my phone going, this project isn't going anywhere. What are you doing? Oh, the other girlfriend, you know, nothing serious. Now, as I was saying before we were so rudely interrupted again, this might seem like a little more hassle than it's worth. I'm gonna freaking sneeze now. Let's you! Now, although this might seem like more hassle than it's worth, this is not as simple as I thought it was gonna be. But the weight savings and the rigidity, the strength of this far exceeds wood. Like, not even a comparison. It lets us have all our parts in there, like the larger fridge, more batteries, the lift bed, without having any fear of going over top our weight limit that Romer came with from the factory. And for me, that's a win that outweighs the downsides. And another thing about this aluminum is the actual cutting process itself. Now I did mention in our first video that you need a special blade for this. Ours is made by Diablo and it's made specifically for the extruded aluminum. But with ours, after about 30 cuts, look what happened here. You can see it actually took a tooth right off of our saw blade while we were cutting our aluminum. Pretty scary thing to have happen. I don't know where that tooth went to. It didn't end up in me, which is a good thing, but this is a challenge, especially if you're new at tools. And this blade is a hundred dollar blade, not something you wanna be going through a lot of. Possibly we're just pushing that saw blade through the aluminum too fast. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock it in both sides like we were with clamps. I'm gonna spray a little bit of WD-40 on the cutting area just to add to the cooling for the blade and then slowly push it through the aluminum. And we get a nice clean cut. Those are the things we need to deal with to get good quality work and hopefully save our tools because these things are getting freaking expensive. But the positive side to buying high quality tools like Diablo stuff is that I contacted them, told them that our saw blew out a tooth cutting through the aluminum. They gave us a replacement one free of charge, no questions asked. It just delayed our video for another week. But this leads me to something that just happened to our channel, which could really help you guys with alleviating the problems that we've just discussed from the brackets to pre-planning where they go to even the saw blade that you won't need now that we have a new link in our video description down below. On our last 8020 video, it sounds like a bunch of you guys reached out to a company called High Tech Automation, and you actually mentioned Dare's Drives when you were talking to them. So the guy's name is Steve. He reached out to me afterwards and asked if we would like to be sponsored or have a link to their products on our 8020 videos. And of course, with this type of product, I said yes. Now I promise, I do not want our channel to come across salesy or product heavy. That's not my goal here at all. But if it's something like a product that I highly support and somebody reaches out to me for a simple link where I don't really have to do a commercial for them per se, but what they've done for us is they've given us a link that I put in the description. Now, if you are planning on doing a build and you wanna use 8020, if you click that link below, fill out your information with your dimensions, they're gonna send back to you a full spec drawing of your build and a complete parts list all free of charge because of that link below. Then, if you decide to purchase your 8020 from High Tech, it's gonna come pre-cut so you don't have to worry about cutting it. It's gonna have instructions so it shows you where all those little T sliders need to go ahead of time. They even have the holes drilled in case you have blind holes where you don't wanna have a bracket or can't have a bracket in. Personally, the way I look at it, 
free drawing with dimensions. It'll come with instructions showing you exactly where to place all those T-nuts and so on. Hashtag winning. Can't go wrong with it. I wish I knew about this before I bought all our stuff. Because we have a whole bunch of 12 foot sections and have to cut it all ourselves. So if you're looking to build a setup with 8020, click that link, fill it out, and let me know how it worked for you. I'm very interested to see how Steve does at High Tech Automation. But with all that being said, let's show you what we've been up to and what took us so long to build. And there we go. Bathroom, fridge, cabinet area, all complete, my friends. Comment below, let me know what you think of it. I will tell you, it's absolutely solid. I am super, super impressed with it. And then in the bathroom area, we got all our wood pieces in because this is gonna be a double-sided wall. It's gonna be plastic on this side, and then we're gonna have furniture board on the other side of the wall. So where the plastic goes, we needed a way to be able to adhere it all to the walls, as well as these are shared corners, so we had to put them on here, and this is all pressure treated wood. Now, I'm not a big fan of pressure treated wood indoors, but for this, it'll be completely sealed in, and I just wanted to make sure we'd never have an issue with mold or anything like that between our walls, because now it's all aluminum and pressure treated in between there. It's good for life, my friends. Then in spots like this, like these corners, where we couldn't get any wood to adhere to, I took a small piece of aluminum and some PL and I glued a piece of eighth inch plywood to it, clamped it together, left it overnight for about 24 hours and it's solid, like it doesn't go anywhere. Just to test it, I even went through it in the freezer for a good 24 hours, pulled it out, still solid, not a problem at all. Just to go over and above like I do, I took it, I set the oven to 350 degrees and then I put it in there for about 10 minutes, pulled it out. It was frozen, it was room temperature, it was heated to 350 degrees, and it's solid. So I am very confident the idea I have for this shower is gonna be perfect. But you're gonna have to stick around to see that episode sometime in the future. I can't guarantee you when, but I am telling you it's coming. And back here, we installed this. This is cedar that's on here, and that is the main pillar where our bed lift is gonna mount to. And I'll show you more on that when we build the one on this side because we're just out of time, my friends. Now, if you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider doing so. No pressure, of course, you do you. If you have subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we, we will see you on the next video. Perfect.